the funnies are ever training session back here. That's the funny. So, you know, usually I see those training sessions and the, the leader is the one that's encouraging and talking. But there's a whole lot of talking going on back there. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't see the wrestling match. No, it's still Okay. So, so uh, I could have run that down there. I just want to take a moment to thank everyone who made my birthday two Sundays ago very special. The food was great, the, the cake, the balloons, the many, many cards, the gifts, everything certainly made me feel special. And I thank each and every one of you. Well, Mary, you're very special to us. So I want to welcome everyone here this morning. Welcome those watching online. And uh, I do have a couple short funnies. A couple short funnies. You know, Pastor Jan, when a fly gets in the house, she's on it. <laughs> she got that fly swatter, and I got a duck once in a while. But she's got that fly swatter. Well, the other day, there was two flies in the kitchen there. And I says, oh, them are two female flies. What, she says? How do you know those are female flies? I says, they're on the phone. Church service, <laughs> ladies. <laughs> so anyway, I got. I, I got one more story. This this couple was discussing it, things, and it was the ladies, the wife's. Uh, birthday. So the husband says, honey, would you like a BMW for your birthday? She says, no, I don't think so. How about a mink coat? No, thanks, she says. How about a diamond necklace? No, I want a divorce, she says. The husband says, oh, I wasn't planning on spending that much. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, it's time. It's time for us. It's time. It's time for us to get serious. It's, it's time for tithes and offerings this morning. So, you know, so um, you know, it's a privilege that we can do that each and every Sunday. Some some churches don't do it, and they struggle financially. We do not struggle financially in this church. We are blessed. So you know why we're, we're blessed? Because God is not a counterfeiter. Have you ever seen counter, counterfeit money? Have you seen people who are counterfeiters? I did. I, sometimes I have to deal with them in business. It's clients and stuff. They're counterfeiters. God is not a counterfeiter. He, God, knows everything that we need already. And, you know, he has it all. He's not a counterfeiter. So the earth has more abundance in this earth than we could ever use. A lot of people don't think so. They think they need this, they need that. But if they would take a hard look, they got more than they need. But they're a little stingy. They don't want to share it with somebody else. So we're supposed to be like God, not be a counterfeiter and share it. So now... <clears throat> 
Uh, this morning, I want to bring up um, Keegan or Lynn, whoever is doing it. <laughs> I want to bring up uh, something this morning to show you how blessed and how um, protected this church is. You see that picture? I don't know if you was going to read that. It says, lower down a little bit, God says, in Malachi, that we give tithes and offerings. We rebuke the devourer for our sake. For something that we believe strongly, and it was proven once again yesterday. Our daughter, Megan Fredrickson, and her friend, Michaela Gotchik, were coming home from church, but instead it ended up in, they ended up in an emergency room after a bad car accident. God says he gives his angels charge over us. God had his angels on these girls and the other driver. No broken bones or serious injuries, just cuts and bruises. God is good. Amen. Now, take a look at that car. Yeah, so right, right here, that's where Michaela was sitting. Right, right where that door is. That door was ripped off. She was sitting right there. And look at that, that car. Look at the truck that smacked that car. And everybody walked away from there. They did wind up at the hospital. I don't think the driver of the truck ever went to the hospital. He was, he did go. He was banged up pretty good. Um, <clears throat> but, but, but God. But God, you take a look at that car. Most people don't walk away from that. Those two girls, they walked away. They, they hugged and cried a little bit at the hospital. <laughs> but uh, the blood of Jesus was over them. Amen. To, you know, so, you know, we got a call here. and I rushed out to go over there. And when I drove up and see that car, I thought, oh, this is not good. <laughs> but then it came to my mind. The blood has been pleaded over them. Amen. Amen. So I went into the ambulance, seeing those two girls were, you know, they were banged up, but they were, they were doing all right. And then I went to the driver of the truck, and he was banged up. He was actually banged up worse than them two girls. And uh, so I prayed with him. And, uh, it, it, when he was in the ambulance, and, and we eventually wound up to the hospital. But what I really want to get at it is, why were those two girls and that driver, even though I don't know if he was Christian or not, but why were they protected? Michaela, do you know why? God was protecting them. What else? Is there something else? Tyler's right. We got Tyler's right. And it's like a bank account. When you need it, you can draw from it. Yeah. And that's what we need to do. We need to draw from it. I know. I know the Theo family has. <laughs> they have drawn from it quite often. I th <laughs> <laughs> There's one thing that I think about always. I think they're always replenishing their bank account. That's why they have those side yeah, rights. Yeah. So, you know, and I know there's other ones that have had things happen where if it wasn't for tighter rights, it would not be good for you. So, I know, I know myself, I had things happen. If it wouldn't be for tighter's rights, I don't know if I'd be standing here today. So, some, some of the things that I tried to do, <laughs> even, even I think back over, um, things before I was even saved. I think back, how, how did that happen? Why did not, why was not my life not taken? You know, I think back about that. Fall off a scaffold 30 feet high. Some, some reason I'm back into the scaffold at a lower level. If, if the angels wasn't watching over me, I don't know who else was. Even even my brother that passed away, what was that, two years ago? He had, he he was having some problems health wise. 
And he shouldn't have been driving, but anyway, he was driving. He'd run his car off the road and through a ditch out in a field. And then he came to uh, as a cop showed up. And so they just took him on. But so I said to him, you know, how did your car is demolished? I said, well, how did you not have anything? He said, because God was with me. So I said, who do you think, who do you think? prevented anything happening to you. Oh, God was with me. This was an unsaved brother until we got him saved. So he knew. And that's why. We got to remember, we got those title rights. We can draw on that bank account any time the need comes up. And the, the, the other thing we need to do is make sure, you know, the Holy Spirit talks us to us all, but do we listen? Sometimes we need to be quiet and listen to that small voice and then do what that small voice says. So, uh, Deb, let's come this morning. We're going to praise the Lord this morning as we do our tithes and offerings this morning. Proverbs. Why do we go to Proverbs? Wisdom. Wisdom. Is, is, uh, Wisdom and Proverbs, is that a male? Oh, so that tells us sometimes we need to listen to the male or the female voice also. So that Proverbs 10.22, the blessing of the Lord makes me truly rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. Pretty strong, huh? Blessings of the Lord. And that comes from a woman. I knew I'd get that comment out of that. So anyway, we thank you, Lord. Father, we come before you this morning, and we praise you and thank you. We just know, Lord, it's a privilege. We planted seeds, and now it's harvest time. How do we know it's harvest time? Because the Lord says you plant a seed, there will be a harvest. Amen. And now if you look, if you have looked at anything you did in the garden around the yard, you see it in the spring, you sowed seeds, and now you're seeing it. You're seeing it. So the same thing happens with your finances because the Lord guarantees. So we praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Jan. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. You know, the, 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 you know, um, Keisha, you would you please go back by the soundboard and have them bring up Dutch sheets because that's what God is telling me to do. Because it is very good; it's delicious. There's just no other word for it. But while she's getting that up, what I'm going to do, um, but I have to wait for for him when he's through, and I want to show you something before Dutch sheets. Okay, Keegan. I want I want you to show. The Christian warrior, growing your children first. But get that other video ready, please. But let's go to Ephesians. I tell you, I have fun everywhere I go. You know that? I mean, even in this exercise class, you know, Keisha, Dee Dee needs to apologize to you. <laughs> she... <laughs> She's she's filing a lawsuit. <laughs> I'm I'm looking and Keisha's trying Keisha's trying to help out how Dee Dee no no yeah and telling Dee Dee she's not doing something right and and I know and all of a sudden I saw Dee Dee like this here whoop and her rolling around on the mat and I'm thinking oh my look at look. What, are, what am I? I need help. I re <laughs> and then and then the instructor said, "Oh, we can't have this." And all of a sudden, he saw it was funny. I think we shock him once in a while, you know that. But it's fun. God is good. God is a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun. Ephesians chapter one, verse seventeen. Father, you are the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're the Father of glory. I ask that you would give unto us 
and we receive it. Your wisdom, your revelation, the knowledge of you that the eyes of our understanding would be open and enlightened so that we may know what is the hope of your calling, what is the riches of your glory, what is our inheritance as your saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of your power toward us who believe according to the working of your mighty power, which you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead and you seated him at your own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is come. Daddy, thank you for putting all things under Jesus' feet and giving Jesus to be the head. And we are the body, and you have downloaded, you have filled us with this word. Do you receive that? I receive that. So you can be seated. And you know what? Looking at those pictures again, because I saw that in memories, but uh, Christina and Steve weren't here at the time, but the awesome thing about it is when I, I just want to laugh over this thing again. Okay. Girls, you've got to behave in them classes. You just got to, where is clear? You, you were doing what you just, So when we got the call, though, and then Debbie went with Megan and I went with um, Michaela in the ambulance and things like that. And I just, I was there when she was born. I, she's my little girl. And it was perfect. She had to have a few of those stitches. I tell you, God is so good. You look at that car again, and when we saw that car later, we're like, oh, man, is that a mess. But God, he'll never leave us or forsake us. He's always there. He will always lift you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. He will fulfill. And the reason you're alive, because I needed you. Got it? Well, we've got a little thing we're going on here. You know the watches that show the steps? Would you show your watch, please? No, no, pull it up. Oh, it's a pink one. Stand up and show people. <laughs> He's eating humble pie. Okay, and so I've got his. And he said, he said to me, you girls, you, it's not working right. Your, your watches are different. They just show more mileage or more steps <laughs> than what they should. Hannah, we do good, don't you? <laughs> There's too many of us, you know. So I don't know how to do this. But it's daily exercise, and I've got 4,354 steps, and I bet you you're beating me, aren't you? Stop it. You can't do this. <laughs> it's good. Is that, does it, does that do it? Kenny, you can sit and do that. So he's got, so this morning I said, okay, we're going to trade watches because I want to show you, right? So now this is his. It never went that high before. <laughs> There's 264 of those steps that I made already. I hate to brag, but. Uh, let's get in that lawsuit together. <laughs> but, but we have fun. But could you first call, could you show us about raising children? Who's got it? Okay. And this is a Christian warrior's growing your children, father, husband, family. So can you turn it up nice and loud? Can you, can you see that? I wish it was bigger, but what are you going to do? When I get home, I'm tired. So how many times do I go in, grab my supper, and go sit in front of the TV? That's something I struggle with. Men, we have to get past that. We have to be sitting down with our children. Sit with them. Love on them. Ask them, what's going on through your day? What's the bad things that happened today? What's the good things that happened today? You'd be surprised if you ask them, what's the worst thing that happened to you today? They'll give it to you, and you'll have an answer. That's called growing your children teaching your children, and there's no better place than right there at that dang dinner table. And I don't care if you or your wife cook. I don't care. Get pizza and put it on the dang dinner table. 
Love on those kids. We don't have them but 18 years, by the way. We need to be molding them and teaching them as much as we can in that 18-year period because the real world sucks, and it's going to attack them in every single way. And if they're not prepared, I need you to grasp this, fathers. If they're not prepared, it's your fault. It's your fault. And when I get home, I'm tired. Monthly and everything, but he is saying, you know, when he gets home, he's tired and he wants to sit down and, you know, stuff. stuff. Well, who doesn't? Right? But he's saying to teach our children, and that's what you folks are doing. Teach your children or your children's children and be there for them and listen to them and hear what they've got to say. You know, the one thing I found out when I took my kids and went someplace with them, Kenny, he, he had to work. He was working um, Monday through Sunday's the only day he didn't work. That was just the way it, it fell. But just to get them, to take them for an ice cream, take them for a walk, just do something. It's amazing what they'll share with you. And not for you to yell at them, but for you to take them at, their, at, at your side and help them understand so that they can overcome every situation with prayer. Because the devil goes in like what? A lion, but he's been declawed and de fanged. But the little foxes, like it says in the Song of Solomon, they go under the fence and they will, re, they will destroy more in that vineyard than the big foxes if they got in. So that's where we've got to be. We've got to listen to our children or have a grandma or somebody that you can uh, say, hey, there's a problem here. Can you help out? Because I don't know what to do. That's what we're here for, guys, to help them. You understand that? So now, would you please play Dutch Sheets? And I think Keisha, the battle buddy, <laughs> told you how far to go, right? We'll get it. We'll get it. Hello, and thank you for joining me today for Give Him 15, and this post will look a whole lot better if I wear these. The title of today's post is, We Are the Cavalry. I first want to thank you for your incredible response of, the per of, response of prayer the past three months. I have never seen anything like it. I'll soon be sharing some of the many great reports that have flooded into our, our office regarding this effort. They are incredibly inspiring. As we move into September, I am confident we have obeyed the instructions of Holy Spirit. Just over a week ago, my brother, Tim, preached a powerful word regarding the season we are entering. He has sent a summary of this message for us to share with you today. And Tim writes, We are in a very strategic moment in history. I heard very clearly from the Lord regarding three months of preparation from June through August leading into September. On June 4th, 2023, he said, that would be three months ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. I will now deal with the oppressors of my people. I will move swiftly and with jealous aggression. For I have heard their cries and will break the hold of the taskmaster's rule over them. Though these oppressors bow their necks in stubborn resistance, I will lead them with nose rings to their place of destruction. Like oxen to the slaughter, I will pull them into stalls of disgrace. The influence of their curse will break from the hearts of my people. The disheartening crack of the taskmaster's whip will no longer be heard by my sons and daughters. They will not carry the burdens of their oppressors. They will not toil for the enemy's gain. They will not work as slaves of cultural brutality. They will not be forced to glean from empty fields 
simply because they worship me. No, they will own the fields where once they gleaned. The breaking sound heard by my triumphant remnant will now be the cracking sound of the oppressor's authority shattering off of their lives. The words of their Pharaoh will be like chaff in the winds as my angels scatter their defiance. Michael and his chariots of fire have received their orders. Gabriel has communicated strategies through all angel armies. Breakthrough angels are now activated. Pharaoh will not have. A final word, I will have a final word. Ecclesia, contend in faith as I harden the hearts of your enemies to bring devastating defeat to them. Set your heart on what I say. Set your minds with now faith, expecting to live in promised places. Move forward into new times and seasons I've prepared for you. Move forward into the reformation I have planned for you. Move forward into positions of authority I have ordained for you. For no, says the Lord, next three months, June, July, and August, will lead to a great shaking and a reset of the nation back to its covenant roots. These will be months of great reformation and will surge rapidly, says the Lord. No, the seeds of faith planted by my people with their decrees of faith will accelerate to fullness, producing the fruit of the seed sown. The faith decrees they've sown will accelerate to fullness. My people will enter a new time. Embrace and move into the reset I have planned. It will now unfold. Decree your faith. Activate my kingdom's power. Decree your faith and activate angel armies that will assist you in the supernatural reset. And now and then Tim speaks himself. That was a prophetic word, of course. This is him speaking. The Lord has emphasized Hebrews 12, 25 through 28 to me which tells us not to turn our back on heavenly warnings. The Lord is going to rock the heavens, thrones, principalities, powers of hell. There will be a shaking, a thorough house cleaning to get rid of sin and religious compromise. The unshakable essentials will stand, clear, unfettered, or uncluttered. We have been told repeatedly not to fear, but we're part of an unshakable kingdom. And our God is not an indifferent bystander. The world is banking on his indifference, Tim says, but they're about to be greatly disappointed. Ephesians 6.10 says, Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. We must be prepared in this season. A battle will rage for the soul of this nation, and we must engage and win it. Prepare yourself for this fierce war season. Prepare to battle spiritual thrones of iniquity that influence government. Understand that you must fight with prayers, faith decrees, worship warfare. Use the weapons of your warfare. They are not carnal, but mighty through your God to the pulling down of strongholds. Prepare yourself to go into battle alongside angels by proclaiming his word. It is time to engage in this breakthrough battle that will lead us toward a billion soul harvest. It is time to engage principalities and powers of darkness and confront those they use in the natural realm. It's time to confront the prophets of Baal and media, the education system, government. The hour has come to report to the battle line. It's time to march 
advance and possess the land. Though there be giants in the land, do not fear. Like David, gather stones and prepare your sling. Sharpen your spiritual swords, for they will be needed to cut off the heads. Spiritual giants. The Lord will go before you and empower you. It's time to listen and hear, Tim said. Listen and hear the pre-battle proclamations, the sounding forth of battle cries, the beating of drums. There is a call for bold passion, much like warriors have heard throughout the ages. We are not here to hold the fort until the cavalry gets here, Ecclesia. We are the cavalry. We must advance with Holy Spirit and the angel armies. We are to follow the breaker, King Jesus. It's our time to awaken and arise, take the land and reset history with determined, unflinching faith. One of the prayers of the early church has captured my attention, he says. Acts 4.29, New Living Translation. And now, O Lord, hear their threats. Give us, your servants, great boldness preaching your word. The early church is part of a movement possessing unrestrained boldness. They said what God said. I'm hearing that call to us now. Holy Spirit is pouring out an anointing of boldness on his ecclesia. Power to prevail is soaking his remnant. Rise. Roar with King Jesus. March into battle with confident peace, knowing he is with you. Now, let's pray with Tim. Lord, we ask for an increase of the boldness you're pouring into your ecclesia. Pour the powerful oil of Holy Spirit upon us, enabling us to arise and make the boldest stand earth has ever seen. Light the fire of courage in our hearts. Awaken love for truth so strongly in us that regardless of what hell throws our way, we won't speak unbelief. Instead, we will shout the promises of God in the faces of darkness, spiritual enemies, and a rebel government. Awaken hearts, infusing them with confidence. As we are moving into the time of the reset battle for the soul of our nation, we will run into the battle with King Jesus and his angel armies. He will take back all that hell has stolen. We ask for Holy Spirit's aggression against hell's iniquity and thrones of darkness. We will not share habitation with and once again, this is a prayer I wrote. Once again, we pray for those fighting evil in America on legal and governmental fronts. We pray for those fighting the evil in America on legal and governmental fronts. We must not forget that. We ask for the exposure and removal of evil prosecutors and corrupt government agencies. We ask for exposure of their dishonesty. End government lawfare and oppression. Shake it down. Bringing defeat and disgrace to those who pervert justice. Defund them and their sources. Give brilliant strategies, perfect timing, and abundant resources, millions of dollars to those fighting for righteousness. Declare victory from heaven, Father. Declare victory from heaven for those being falsely accused. Restore justice and a pure constitutional government to America, shake down all else. 
And it is in the authority of Christ we pray and declare these things. Amen. And today's decree, we declare that a supernatural reset has begun, and that the ecclesia will now rise with unflinching boldness, advancing, taking back. The land. Amen. Well, today's post was contributed by my brother Tim. You can learn more about him at timsheets.org. You can go there and hear that powerful message. Cavalry is coming. Our cavalry's here. We have a title. It. We listened to you this know. in the prayer room, but it um, when the Holy Spirit said, "Play it again." Isn't that encouraging? You know, it's like a horse. You ever see a horse race? Anybody see? We saw, I saw a real horse race. You know, and those horses are just, mm -hmm. and the minute those gates open, bang, they're gone. That's the Christian faith. We're going to see billions of people come in to know Jesus Christ. People have rejected Jesus. They think Church isn't important. They think God isn't important. They just know God is going to show them. And that's what we're standing on. Because they have to also do the Great Commission of telling people about Jesus, sharing it. So is that good or is that good? Okay. Now, what, what I've done here is um, I'm going to share this with you. I think it's really good. I have to get them all in line here. So what have we been working on? We're working on all those things that be not as though they were. We have to call on imagination. Now, I'm going to ask you, please, put aside the imagination of things. Because we have gotten, the, the Christian church has gotten into too much of the imagination of things on this earth, but I want you to step into the heavenly realm and take your rightful seat because that's where you're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, Ephesians 2, 6, correct? So now with taking your rightful place, that's where you get your images from so that you can further the kingdom of God, but that also God will give you the words, he will give you understanding he will give you revelation. He will give you wisdom, whatever you have need of. So get off of the ground. I was going to have that up here, but we're going to wait until that's fixed up a little bit. It looks a little shabby. But we're seated in heavenly places. We're not on the earth. We're not of this world, but we are of this world. But once you've asked Jesus into your heart, you are called a saint. That means you're set apart. A saint is one that's set apart. A saint is not one that you pray to. As I was taught the church I was raised in, we had all these saints we praised to, prayed to. That was not correct. There's only one that we go to, the Father in Jesus' name. He says, go to the Father in Jesus' name. You don't pray to Mary. You don't pray to saints. You don't pray to anybody. You pray to the Father in Jesus' name. There's a proper way. If you, like when you're planting seeds, for instance, you know what I'm talking about? You're planting a garden. You go and you get the package, and on the package it shows a picture of what you want to plant, right? And then you take that and you plant it, and then it grows. But you have to first get the plant. You've got to put it in. And then you know that's guaranteed to grow, right? Now, when we cast our care on the Lord, when we say, God, I give you this situation, we need to get that in us, that we give whatever the situation is over to the Lord. Now he's involved. He's involved in that situation. And what do we do? We praise and thank you, him, because that's watering that seed. But you can know 100% that will produce. 
I know 100% it will produce. It always does. But if we don't believe that, then it's not going to produce. That's why we have to get into that agreement of God's word. And what is the agreement of God's word? The agreement is, we believe you, God. We have faith in you, and we're not going to let go. Is that true? Yeah. So God is not, he's not mocked, okay? He's not mocked, meaning my word is true and everything else is not. If anything is against the word of God, it is not true. Now, what did he talk about in here? Did you get that? He was talking about words. We've got to watch what we're saying, and we've been studying this for a long time. We've got to watch our words even in our bedchamber. That means in the bathroom. Because when you speak things out loud, being that you are a king, how do I know I'm a king? Revelations 1.6 tells me, tells you, that we are priests and kings. So we can go directly to the Father. All right, we don't have to go in, okay, like they did in the olden days, and lay down those prayers for a year and, and hope it worked and blah, blah, right? No. Now we go before the heavenlies. We are always on that throne of God. So whatever we give to him, it does not come back to us void. Even if we don't stand with it, we can always go back and pick it up. He is fabulous. So uh, this, this, the words of God is God's instruction to us. And it's a good way of living. All of us, when no kids are younger, all are you? Didn't you? Did you get into some trouble? Of course, I'm not going to point out Jeff. But, but they do things that when they grow up, they say, "Oh, that was wrong," and then Pastor Kenny too. Oh, that was wrong. Of course, I was perfect. But you know, when you look at drinking and smoking, guys, don't get into it. Don't get into it. You know what? You're not smoking. The cigarette is smoking, but you're the sucker. And we fall for that, don't we? And because we get off or we've been taught wrong or we follow people we shouldn't be following, we've got to follow the word of God. We are not a religious church. We don't follow a religion of man. We follow the word of God. We've got that, don't we? Ephesians 2.10. Would you please bring that up, Hagen? So now, speak what you want to come to you. That's the title. Speak what you want to come back to you. What do you want? If you're speaking about another person and it's not good, that is guaranteed to come back to you. Because in Psalms 45, it tells us that every word is written down. That's not to harm us. That was not what it was meant to do. But now we're learning, don't speak what you don't want. Oh, probably on the way home, I, I'm so short on gas, I'll probably run out of gas. And sure enough, it happens, right? You'll say, see, I spoke it. Yeah, you got what you, what you asked for, didn't you? You spoke it, right? You know, every time I go outside that steps, I just know one of these times I'm going to fall. And then finally one day I fall. You see, I told you so. I spoke it into existence. You see what we're doing? That is not what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be watching what we say, our words, even in our bathrooms, in the water closet. Got it? So Ephesians 2.10, for we are, we are what? We're his, whose workmanship? We're God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what? For good works. Now, when you speak opposite of good, that's bad, right? That isn't good works. You don't want that. Now, if I say, if I say, um, Okay, I'll pick on Dee Dee. She's so pickable like a booger. <laughs> 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 and, 
And I say, you know, she's just meaner than a junkyard dog. When it comes to the devil, she'll clean him right up and chase him out. That's good. Okay? Then I turn around and I say the opposite to Michaela. Michaela, every time you do something, you always say, well, what are you going to get me on the phone here? What's wrong with me? What did I just sow? Good and bad, that's going to come back to me. That, but you know what? I got to repent of what I did here because those were not good works. Your words are very important to God. He waits for your words to speak. That's the way God gets involved on this earth, by our words. And he wants us to speak his word so that he can come in in every situation and help us and do it for us, which God, which God prepared beforehand. How long ago did he pray, prepare that for us? Before the foundation of the world. Okay? Now, that we should walk in what? In them, in what? He's saying, now, if you watch what you say, you're going to walk in good works. You're going to walk in the blessings that you're speaking. But if you're speaking the opposite, okay, like right when I spoke that over Michaela, now, I didn't mean that. Now, I was using that as, a, as an example. But I put that right there. I've got it. I can't walk in the gifts of God because of what I said. But Pastor Jack, no, God's not kidding around. We are so valuable to him. He waits for every word so that he can fulfill it for us so that we can walk in those good works. And what are the good works? What are the good works? Healing, prosperity, Joy, peace, love, on and on and on. That's what he wants us to walk in. Is that true? So Ephesians um, 4.29. So what does he tell us? Let's, let's just stay on this vein. Let no corrupt what? Let's read it together. Let no corrupt word out of your mouth go forth. But what is good? Did you get that? So, let no corrupt word out of your mouth. Let no corrupt word. Don't let any corrupt. What is corrupt? That would damage you. But now, if you speak bad about somebody else, that's going to come back, and it is going to damage you, and it is going to affect you. Do unto others you want done unto. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't want to do that, right? If I'm upset with Kenny and I start, you know, yelling at him and stuff, I'm putting up a wall and my prayers are not going to be answered. Did you see that? Because what am I saying? But why do we do that sometimes to our husband or to our wife? Why do we do that? Because, oh, they'll take it. They'll put up with me. But God won't. God won't. He'll let the devil take over and have his way with you. He cannot stop the devil. That's why we need to repent and we need to take those words and get them out. Resist the devil. Repent of that. We don't want to mess with that. So let no corrupt word out of your mouth go forth. But what is good unto the what? Build, oh, the needful for building up. Needful. You know what? Even to an animal. How do some people talk to an animal? You think about that. I'll, I'll look at Liberty. She comes over, and I'm telling her she's a good girl and everything because you want to say good words. Or you have seen dogs already. I know when we took little stubby for that. I did for that training school. They said, don't shake your fingers at your dog and don't do that. That's a dog. Because they'll, they were there to please you. They were there to please you, and you treat them like that. Now, 
we hear that all the time, don't we? How they treat it. We should never do that. Or a horse. You can tell if they've been abused. You can tell if a human being has been abused. All right. So you want to build, just like an animal, you want to build that animal up. We were, we were in the room the other day, and Earl came in with Liberty, and she came in, her, her, we're sitting on the sofa, and her tail is just, you know, everything is going, and she's just, you know what I'm saying, you know. And she comes over and stands between me and the coffee table, and I'm petting her, and she's looking, and then Earl left, and he's wanting her to come, and she's moving a little bit forward, and she's thinking, I ain't going with him. She trusts me. I don't hurt her. Do you get that? But do your children trust you? Do we trust ourselves? That's why self-control. So now, now, let's read it together again. Let no corrupt word out of your mouth go forth, but what is good unto the needful building up, that is, may give grace to the hearers. Because that's exactly what's going to come back to you. You guys do that. You say good things. But we've got to watch it, don't we? All the time because you get angry. Okay. Now, uh, Ephesians 4.29 in the message, it says, watch the way you talk. Did you get that? Watch the way you talk. Do you cut on people? Well, that's going to come back and it's going to cut on you. It's, God isn't doing this to you. We're doing this to us. You know, it's, it's, when, you, when you look at that, you go, oh, my goodness sakes, what did I do? Right? So I don't know if you want me to go that. I will. But I'm going to put this one in just so you get this here. Now, in Psalms 45.1, you don't have that, but keep that right there. Egan, don't switch it. In Psalms 45, 1, my heart overflows with a godly theme. I address my psalm to the king. Who is our king? Jesus. That's a capital K. My tongue is like the pen of a ready writer. We get to talk with the king, he calls us kings. We're seated in heavenly places. We're just like Jesus to him. Jesus is his son. We're the sons and daughters, right? And the Holy Spirit is our helper. So he says in message, again here, watch the way you talk. Now we know this. When something's written down in ink, it stays, doesn't it? Okay. Let, not, let nothing foul or dirty come out of your mouth. Say only what helps each, each word a gift. Just think. Are you, do you ever get mad at a neighbor or mad at your spouse or mad at your kids or something like that, and you just want to... Everybody's perfect. Well, I used to do that. I get so mad. And then when, when I accepted Jesus, so much of that changed because I didn't feel like doing that anymore. But those words of love, it's a gift. But when you speak opposite of the love word, God's word, and it's the devil's word, you're speaking hate and curses over yourself. That's pretty, ooh, that doesn't feel so good, does it? So in Mark eleven twenty four 24 and 25, this is the message Bible. Jesus was matter of fact. Embrace this God life. What? Really embrace it, and nothing will be too much for you. This mountain, what does the next four words say there? For instance, just says, go jump in the whoa, lake. Now, go ahead. No, shuffling or hawing. Pray absolutely everything ranging from small to large, include everything as you embrace this God life. You see what? 
Now, this is because I'll tell you, we got some blessings coming. We, I mean, the, September. Do you want to be in on the gifts? you want to get in on this whole thing? We got to clean up our mouth. I mean, it, you got to watch every word you say. That's, this is hard. Yeah, because we've got what you call diarrhea of the mouth. Where is that? Oh, they took that off the back door where the, the mother is speaking over the child, is it, and the words of hate and everything. Ooh. So it says you embrace this God life, and you'll get God's everything. And when you assume the posture of prayer, remember what? That it's not all asking. If you have anything against anyone, forgive. Only then will your heavenly Father be inclined to do what? Oh, wiping the slate clean of sins. Do you see? See, God doesn't put a wall up. God doesn't send people to hell. That's people's choice because they don't want to ask him into their heart, right? Or they'll ask Jesus into their heart, but they won't change their way of living. So is that proof now that they have asked Jesus into their heart? No, because your life is going to change. It's a promise. So God is good. Now, in Matthew 18, 19, what does he say? Okay, again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth, two, two, two of you agree on earth about anything, then they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. That's a promise. You know, when I get in agreement with somebody, okay, Dee Dee, I'm going to use you, pick on you a little bit again. Pickable. When she was going through a very hard time in her life, she agreed with things, and then we talked every day for how many months? Yeah, I mean, she was a, a wimp before that. Now she's got a backbone. Look out. <laughs> yeah, Keisha, she's got a back. Just look out. I'm not going to put you two, you, you two cannot work out on the mats together. No more. She said before service that you should apologize to her. <laughs> I love to stir things up. <laughs> but, but again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth, so Didi and I would agree on something, okay? And Pastor St. Cyr's wife, Judy St. Cyr, helped us at first. And then all of a sudden, we just had to jump into the water. She didn't have that time. We agreed on things. You know, and she, Aunt Jan, I just, you know, don't say nothing. No, d d We've got our, Right? We've got an agreement. We've got to, don't you change, right? And there's times when I wanted to take a baseball bat and go and hit somebody with it, right? But, and life is good. Because we got an agreement, and it took years for those things to come to pass. But nowadays, it's not taking that long. It's happening faster. So when you get in agreement with somebody, don't turn around five minutes, an hour later, and say, it's not working, because your stinking thinking and your feelings get in the way. It's feely touchy. Oh, when people get all feely touchy, I'm just like, please get away from me. So now, in, in, in um, Ephesians 4.29, he says again, let no corrupt word out of your mouth go forth, but what is good unto the what needful building up that it may give grace to the hearers, right? That's why we got to, you know, and what we should do is make a pack with each other and with other people and say, okay, if I say something wrong, will you correct me? Yep, can I correct you? That's what we should be doing to help each other. So now, again, let's go down to Luke 6.45. Luke 6.45. A good man out of the what? 
I don't hear you. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth good. Oh, 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 what does that mean? What's in your heart? What's in your heart? Did you ever clean that up? Did you ever clean that up? Are you angry about something from a long time ago? Or do you feel like, oh, somebody's did you wrong? Get over it. Just give it to God. I guarantee you he will take it. Because you've got the word of God. The word of God does the cleaning up. We don't do it. We give it to him and we cooperate with him and he takes care of it all. Got it? So, as a good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart brings forth, brings forth, for out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. Right? Did you ever run into anybody who's just wah, 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 all the time? Just go, no, I don't receive that. But give them to the Lord. Pray for them. Don't throw people away. God didn't. So now Philippians 4.19 says, now we've got, see what we're building on here? And, and what does he say in 4.19? Let's read it together. And my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We just have to do it his way. What do we do? We take, when, when, when a need for finances or whatever it is isn't working, you say, my God supplies all of my needs according to what? His, yeah, for us. His riches and glory, not ours. You, you, we're so busy trying to get rich, and you're never going to get there. You'll just have more problems and problems. But once you give it to the Lord and you look at that car that Michaela and Megan went through and came out, no break. And look at your both tall in that car. How did your legs ever fit under and not get broken? Is that God? Is God good? Aww. Aww. And remember, the doctors told uh, Christina she'd never have children. Hey, Satan. Ha, ha, ha. Do you get it? Laugh at the devil. That's what God does. So now Mark 4, 11, 24, we'll just read that one. For this reason, I'm telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it will be granted to you. Are you getting this? Now think. Think. If we start consciously saying, I'm going to watch my mouth. I'm going to watch my mouth. I'm going to watch what I say. I'm going to watch. Where should I go? Father, i got to start this over because that's too much of a big job for me to do. Okay, I'm going to start over. Father, I give it to you. I need help with watching my words. I give it to you. Help me. And he said, yes, ma'am. And then what will happen, that little tapping, will come on your shoulders, where all of a sudden, this little, like the chicken running through the soup, chicken noodle soup, just the chicken running through it, that little flash will come, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. Right? Right? I tell you, you know what? When you get a bigger family, even a small family, and things aren't going right, you just want to blast. Correct? We can't do that. Because when we curse them, we're cursing ourselves. Does that make sense? So God is so good to us. He's good to us. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take communion over this. Okay, because it's sealed in the blood of Jesus. And I do hope you wrote those scriptures down that what you can do, I need one of those, I think. No, I've got it so that you can go back and look over this, because don't tell me we all don't need help. And you know what? I was reading something, um, and it was from a commentary from uh, Andrew Womack, and he was talking about we say too many words. 
sometimes we say too many words. We should go to the Lord. Here, I give it to you. What are you giving to, the, to him? I give you me controlling my mouth and my emotions. Take it. Thank you for taking it. And then you don't go, blah, 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 blah. Because you, you know what? He said you'll do just like Eve. Talk yourself right around where you'll believe the devil because you're wasting your words. She didn't think. But Adam was held responsible because he is the one that had the truth. And then they were put in the garden. He should have stopped. He should have stopped the devil right there and said, get out of here. That is not the rules God gave me. Eve, step aside. I've got this covered. Just think about that. That's where we have to be bold and go back to the truth. So now we're taking this because we know everything in this flesh has been taken care of. Everything has been taken care of. We know that. If you have an illness, whatever you've got going on, what do you do? Dear Lord, I give it to you. And then you speak to it. What is it? Is it a pain? Pain? Get off. Backache? Backache? Get off. Oh, by the way, Donna's walking in regular shoes. She's back on it again. Now, think about this. God is good. He does more than enough. So now we break this here because his body was broken. And so whatever he did, we've got it. Amen? But the blood... This is the real deal. Now, where did Jesus, after he finished on the earth, where did he go? He went into hell. But before he went, he gave up the deity. He went in like you and I, a sinner. He had, his father had to turn his back on him. And he had to go into hell and suffer the worst you could ever imagine. Past, present, and future. He did it all for us. And that blood of Jesus, what did it do to the power of the devil? It destroyed the power of the devil. So the devil does not have any power over you. The only way he gets power is if you speak evil out of your mouth. <laughs> How about that? Right? So that's where, and that now, like going on to, you know, to school, you kids are back in school. You got to watch everything that goes on because the devil's just waiting to line you up to give you some real, you know, real, it sounds so good. And before you know it, it ain't so good. He's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. So now, Father, I thank you. Say, Father, I thank you. That by the blood of Jesus, you destroyed the power of the devil over me. I receive every one of your promises in this word. It is mine now. Help me, Father, to control my words, my emotions, my gossip in every area of my life. Let's drink. Is God good? He is good all the time. He never... You know, walking free, Debbie, or Keegan or whoever, walking free with the words on and the, well, you know, the men walking free. I, I love that song because of meeting people. You know, my brother Butch was up at the jail here several times. Your dad was up there for a year, for a year at the jail. So I never went to visit my brother Butch. I wasn't old enough or something like that. I don't know. They didn't want to tell us where he was at first, and I figured it out. So all you have to do is you have a register in your bedroom and you hear something and you go, what is in jail? 
I didn't tell anybody at the time. I really don't care. You know, he messed up. And he kept on and he kept on and he didn't want to listen to anybody. He was going to do it his own way. And he died of alcoholism. But he wasn't going to listen to anybody or take any advice. But he could have received Jesus before he died. We can't judge that. That's why God wants us to take correction from him and he'll speak through people. He'll speak through music. He'll speak through so many things. But when you look at this, it's a second from the last guy, and he's in a, 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 what do you call it? Yeah, he's in there, and he, you know, and he was, you'll see, he was given away, and he got in trouble. Well, Mikey knows what prison is about. He was falsely accused. I will stand on God's life over that, because he was falsely accused. Because if he was guilty, he would have been there yet today. He got five, low, five years, and you got to come for five months and live with us. God is good. The devil shouldn't have done that to him. He shouldn't have done that to him. You have got great recompense of reward. He was a millionaire. And the devil, just because he sued the IRS, nasty people. It's called recompense of reward. I can hardly wait. I'm glad he's my son. Yeah, I have to slap him up once in a while and let you know. So when you sing this here, look at these fellows. And just look at what they went through, but they got out, and they changed their life. I wish my, I wish my brother Butch would have, but he didn't. I can't do anything about that. Mm -hmm. So let's play that. Would you stand, please? And we're going to enjoy because they are free just like we are. Amen? Inspirational. I really, so many of my family's members, my family's members, my family, my siblings, when I, Dee Dee's mom was an alcoholic, I know I, if I wouldn't have accepted Jesus, I'd be dead too. But she did come to know Jesus before she left this earth. But she was in the garage with her big bottle of vodka and drank herself to death. We're free. We're free. But you know what? You know what taught us to drink? My dad. We watched him, and that's what taught us. My oldest brother, Dwayne, was an alcoholic until the last three years of his life after I introduced him to Jesus at his wife's bedside when she died. Yeah, got her saved two weeks before that. Wow, we never thought Dwayne would ever get saved. <laughs> but God, so that day when the Lord told me to go, we, we were out there for the last three days staying overnight to be with the family because it was at, at their daughter's house, and they didn't know how to handle that. But I praise God that I was able to be there. They had hospice, but hospital doesn't, hospice doesn't tell you about Jesus. That thing is, why do we spend money on that? Hmm. Got it? Yeah. It's not good. They don't tell you about Jesus. They just encourage you to die. That's not good at all. But Eb was in there. She had died. I came out. Dwayne had came. My brother Dwayne went and sat on the bed. And he's holding her arm. I, I don't think he was drunk anymore, was he, that day? No. And um, the Lord said to me, go back in there. And I said, oh, I know. I'm, he 
he hates me. He, he is so mean to me all the time. I ain't going near that sucker. And all of a sudden, I'm walking in there like somebody is actually taking. You know, and Dee, Dee, she said she was behind me or something, but she's like, oh, Aunt Janet, you're over. No, no. And she said, I got, over, got out of there because I thought this ain't going to be good. He accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Three years later, he died. He had a cigarette yet, and it fell into the garbage, and he burned up in the fire. He couldn't give that one up. You know, it's not going to, you know, people can drink and smoke. You can do whatever you want. I'm, right? But don't let your children see that. Don't let, don't, don't bring them down. Now, that's my lineage, okay? I got another one that's an alcoholic, yet that's not dead yet. But it's, it's so sad. But this is my family. But I still pray for them, and I still believe, and I still the other day went and got done what I was supposed to do that I gave. God said, one more week, and I went, and I got it done. I'm, you better believe it, Joey. We got it. We got it. We got it. See, God gives you an assignment, and you don't want to do it. Did you ever do that? I'm like, I ain't doing that. How am I going to do that? Just shut up and go. If you get there, you'll know what to do. And I did, and it was delicious. It was so good. Thank you, Jesus. Get it? So, Father, I thank you, and I give you the glory. Now, what we've got this morning is we now, you've got all the scriptures. Take those scriptures, look them up. Some of you have recompense of reward. You've been stole from Got it? Do you want it back? Then what you got to do is you got to watch your mouth. What you say. You've got to say what you want. Mary, God just told something to me. You know, you said you don't want to walk so much, you're afraid of falling. No, no. You say, I have perfect balance. I walk perfect all the time. Start speaking what you don't what you want, not what you don't. I have money. It flows from several different areas. I have whatever I ask. Now, you're going to go up in that heavenly. See over there on that chart? You're going to go up in that heavenly and sit in that chair, and what you're going to do, listen to me, listen, you are going to get an image of this word, and that's, what's going to come into your life right here. Got it? Father, I thank you and I give you the glory and the honor for you are good. There's no God like my Jehovah, and I praise you. Father, we just give every situation to you, and we thank you for taking it. And now I plead the blood of Jesus over each one of you and over your families. And I, oh yeah, there's a lot of them coming back to the Lord. They have strayed, and they're coming back. And it's, it's already done, so thank God for it. In Jesus' name, you received that? Yes. Amen. God bless you. Have an awesome day.